Hello and welcome to my video on deploying System Center Configuration Manager 2012 in a Windows Server 2012 domain. This is an overview of the lab architecture. We have four machines. First we have a domain controller which is also performing DNS. We have a System Center Configuration Manager server. It's our primary site server, a SQL server, and both the management and distribution point. We have a Windows 10 client as well as a Windows 7 client and these will be the machines involved in this particular video. In order to install System Center Configuration Manager certain roles and features are necessary. So on our Configuration Manager server we're going to install IIS, the .NET Framework 3.5 and 4.5, Remote Differential Compression, Request Filtering, Basic Authentication, IP and domain restrictions, URL authorization, and Windows authentication. We will also need to install .NET extensibility 3.5 and 4.5, ASP and ASP.NET 3.5 and 4.5, the IIS Management Console, IIS 6 Management Compatibility, IIS 6 Metabase Compatibility, IIS 6 WMI Compatibility, IIS management scripts and tools and the management service. We are also going to create a system management container and delegate control. We're going to update the Active Directory schema and optionally we can install WSUS. There are two main prerequisites to installing SCCM. You're going to need SQL Server. We're going to use SQL Server 2012 in this lab. We're going to install the updates. We're going to use the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit for Windows 8.1 and we're going to use the deployment tools Windows PE and USMT when we install the ADK. There's also a step-by-step -step guide and Config Manager 2012 prerequisites installation tool that is available online and here you see those addresses in case you want to download those and get a look at those guides as well. And now let's begin the installation of System Center Configuration Manager 2012. Here I am on the member server, serve.sccm.net, and this is where I will be installing System Center Configuration Manager. So I want to go to Server Manager to install the roles and features. So I select to add roles and features, select Next, select the server, Next. I scroll down, add the web server, add the features, select next. As you can see .NET Framework 4.5 is already installed so I install .NET Framework 3.5, scroll down to remote differential compression, select that and next, next again on this screen I will scroll down to security I will select basic authentication, IP and domain restrictions, URL authorization, and Windows authentication. Under application development, .NET extensibility 3.5, 4.5, ASP, ASP.NET 3.5, ASP.NET 4.5. Scroll down some more. Under Management Tools, I want IIS 6 Metabase Compatibility, IIS 6 WMI Compatibility, IIS Management Scripts and Tools, and the Management Service. I select Next. On the Confirmation screen, you want to select to specify an alternate source path this will point to the Windows 2012 DVD. So we go to select a path. In my case it'll be D colon backslash sources backslash SXS. Select OK and install.
depending upon your particular environment this may take more or less time so I will halt the video here and pick it up again after the installation is finished and here the installation has completed we can select close and now I'm going to move over to the domain controller here I am on my domain controller and I will go to server manager tools ADSI edit and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create the system management container in active directory the system management container will be used to publish the records that will be used to find our system center configuration server so I go to ADSI edit connect to we're going to connect to the default naming context, select OK. We go to the system container, and here I'm going to create a new subcontainer called System Management. So select New, Object, Container, Next. The spelling is very specific. System Space Management. select next and finish now here I want to go to Active Directory users and computers and show you this container in Active Directory here I am in Active Directory users and computers I want to go to view advanced features and here we can see our system container and under system we now have our system management container. In order for the SCCM server to store those records here, we're going to have to set the permissions on this folder. So I can right click, go to properties, security, add. Now under object types, we're going to have to select computers and OK. select our server SCCM backslash serve dollar sign give it full control under advanced again we will select our server edit we'll use the drop down select this object and all descendant objects and you can see all the permissions are selected we'll select OK OK and OK so we have created our system management container and we have set the permissions to enable our SCCM server to store those records in Active Directory. Next we will go back to our SCCM server. I will go to the Config Manager DVD and from here I'm going to modify the Active Directory schema. So I go to SMS Setup, Bin, X64, and I will execute the file called extadsch.exe I simply click it and it runs if I go to C on the root of C you will see extadsch.log once you open this file you can verify that the Active Directory schema has been successfully extended next I'm going to install SQL Server so I'll go to my DVD select setup exe and begin the installation installation new SQL Server standalone installation set up support rules set up support rules identify problems that might occur when you install SQL Server as you can see all have passed we're going to use the evaluation version next we'll accept the license terms next here we have our updates I'll download and install those
you so the updates have been installed setup support rules of all passes and a firewall warning SQL Server feature installation we want database engine services client tools connectivity and management tools basic and complete setup is running rules to determine if the installation process will be blocked show details everything is passed next the default instance next here we're going to set all startup types to automatic We want to change the account name for the SQL Server database engine to the network service. So we'll select our drop down. We can browse. I'll type in network here. Network service. OK and OK. Under Windows Authentication Mode, we'll add the current user. Next. Next again. Setup is running rules to determine if the installation process will be blocked. Show the details. Everything has passed. And install. The installation has finished. Close and close. The final step will be to install the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit. I have that located here on the desktop. ADK setup. See the file location. I'll accept the default. Next. Accept the license agreement. Deselect Act Volume Activation Performance Toolkit and SQL Server Express. And we will just deploy the deployment tools, the pre installation environment, and the user state migration tools. Install. And it will perform the installation. If you have not previously downloaded the ADK, Setup will go online and download those components. Close and close again and the deployment kit has been installed. Now I am going to install the System Center Configuration Manager. So I'll go back to my DVD, splash HTA and run the application. Install. Click Next. Here I will install the Configuration Manager primary site. Next. This is going to be an evaluation edition accept the license terms, accept all three license terms here. Certain language files are required for SCCM setup. If you have not downloaded them previously, you have the option to download them now. I have downloaded them already, so I will use this option to use previously downloaded files and I'll browse to that location. So I have them on my desktop and the SCCM download and I will select English for my server language next English for my client language next I will deselect to install the configuration manager console I will add a site code SCC and a site name SCC-site 
and next. I can either join the primary site to an existing hierarchy or I can install the primary site as a standalone site. I will select that option and next. Here it gives you a warning you have selected to install the site as a standalone primary. You can expand the site into a hierarchy at a later time by installing a central administration site. I will continue here. Select next again. Accept the defaults. And here you see the FQDN of our SCCM server. Here I will select the option to configure the communication method on each site system role and select next. Here you can see the management point and the distribution point is our system management server. Next. I'm not going to join the customer improvement program at this time. Next. Here's a summary of our configuration. Select next. It's going to do a prerequisite check. And you'll notice we have a warning for configuration for SQL Server memory usage. In order to solve this issue, we're going to modify our SQL Server configuration. So I'll go to Start, SQL Server Management, Connect, right click our server, go to Properties, under Memory, we want to set the minimum and maximum to 4 gig. Okay. Close out here and rerun our check. Once the check has completed, I will begin the installation. And the installation has finished. I'll select close.